Hi guys, PJ here again. Today we're working on a 55 plate Astra, Vauxhall Astra, and we're removing the factory fitted radio and fitting a double DIN radio. That's one of the larger ones. Now we're also fitting steering wheel controls for this, so I'll uh, quickly run through all the part numbers we're using to get all this working. Steering uh, wheel controls we're using are these particular ones, and these are made by Autoleads. There's your part number, CP2VX52. They are a complete package. They include a ignition switch power feed. So you're not going to need to run power from the, uh, the back of the radio to the fuse box for an ignition switch. This pack will do that for you. So in other words, you won't lose your radio station when you turn your, your uh, ignition off. Face your adapter. We have this one. Double DIN, and again by Auto Leads. Now these come in matte black, gloss black, silver, etc. This particular dashboard's gloss black, but uh, the person uh, concerned wasn't too worried, so we're fitting a matte black one here. And you're also going to need a fitting kit, a cage kit such as this, 103 millimeter. Very important. There's also 113 millimeter. So you want DFPK 103. Okay. Like I say, not yet. DFPK113, that is no good at all. Right, we're going to go ahead and remove the stereo now. Okay, so you're going to want release keys that look like this, very large U-shaped ones, and there's holes top and bottom on the radio. Normally in these holes, if the radio has never been out before, you will have tiny little grub screws on an Allen key. So you have to put your uh, little Allen key in and unwind them, take them completely out. This particular radio is missing them because it's been out in the past. They're not really needed to be put back in, but... Uh, you know, if they're still in there. So what you do is shove your key in until it clicks, yeah? Obviously, I've already loosened this because, uh, like I say, you know, I'm holding the camera with one hand, so you need both hands. All you do is pull them apart from each other, so spread the keys slightly, yeah? So push them each direction and pull, yeah? And the radio will come out. Take your keys out, like so. Once you've pulled it forward, you've got a quad lock connector on the back, with squeezy tabs, squeeze them together and pull, there you go, there's your squeezy tabs lock. So that's locked down, squeeze the tabs, pull it round and open, and the connector slides out. You've got a FACRA aerial connector, uh, there we go. Very simple push on job. Again, squeezy tab, so that actually fell off, would be on the back of the, uh, back of the aerial light, so yeah. And you just squeeze the tab and pull, off it comes. Take your radio out of the way, Next, you're going to want the cage out of the way. So there's like a metal frame goes around the top, yeah? You're going to need to pull that out, so just bend it in a little bit. It's not tight. There you go. Come out dead easy. But take that out. Don't need that at all. Get rid of it. If you want a little bit more space to work on on these, you can pull this heater panel out quite easily. Uh, this makes it quite easy for moving wiring and stuff out of the way. So what we're going to do to remove this, um, I've popped one already because like I say one handed, get a little flat blade screwdriver under this tab yeah, and pull it forward and then the same again with this one, if we just pop it under, up and out look and the whole unit move that out of the way, will come forwards, yeah. on the back of it you'll have two connectors, this one which is a, a locking clip, yeah. all you do is push down on the little tab and move this across, pull it out. yeah. The other one, this is the power connector, there you go, which sits in there, squeeze the tabs together and pull it out. Uh, worth noting, in case you ever need it, the large thick red wire on the end of that is an ignition switched 12 volt. Could be handy for you, depends what you're fitting, you never know. Right, so move that out of the way, and as you can see underneath now, you've got a large area, you can actually get your hand right through to pull all your cabling down if you need a bit of space behind there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and fit our uh, uh, radio. It's actually a DAB radio, so we're using a, a DAB aerial. There you go, DABAA1 antenna, which looks like this. It's a window screen mount one and requires power from the radio. We'll put all that on now, and then I'll follow up and show you what it looks like when it's in there. Okay, so quick update, guys. Um, we've got the uh, DAB aerial mounted here. As you can see, it just sticks on the windscreen and sticks up in a row there. And then uh, tuck it up underneath the glove box, and so it comes out of the dashboard here. Yeah. So all I've done is take the wires together, and there you've got your connectors ready. Now, before you go to fitting your double DIN kit to your new radio, the, the radios come with a metal cage, a metal frame around them, yeah? So all you got to do is 
take it off. You don't use it at all. There, that cage there. And the reason you don't use it, it's too big. It won't fit in the hole, okay? It will not fit in the plastic frame you bought. It is too big. So that's why you need the cage kit, the smaller one. So that's redundant, get rid of that. And also that's redundant is the trim around the edge. You don't need that either. That comes with the cage kit. So take that off, get rid of that, put that to one side safely. It's worth keeping those in the box, in the packaging, because if ever you change your car and take your radio out, you may well need them. So you don't need anything, you just need the bare radio, uh, and then we'll look at fitting the cage kit for you. Okay guys, so referencing fitting the actual double DIN kit, your plastic frame that you get, it just sits in, look, it's on little plastic lugs. So there's your plastic fascia, just shove it in. You know, it's, it's not gonna fit tight, it just sort of sits in there. And on your, your actual fitting kit that uh, we got for this car, you get like a, like I say, a cage, which is smaller than the cage you took off the original stereo. Okay, that's the key factor here. This is actually smaller. Uh, comes with two fitting plates, some clips there. These need screwing to the stereo to actually bolt it to the stereo. You get a selection of little, little screws there, look, to fit them to the stereo. And all you do to fit those to the stereo if we just move the cage out of the way for a second there, get your stereo and you will notice on the edge of it lots and lots and lots of little holes there yeah so just to position that and all you want to do is get your brass bits i think these are made of brass not really sure i think they are and uh, line up the edge of it with the frame edge of the stereo yeah so the plastic lugs that stick up go with the edge here so when you put a trim on the end of it, it's just going to butt up to it. See that? Just there, look. So you want them about there, yeah? And then all you do, I mean, you're going to have to faff fat around with this a bit, because obviously the car surface is not flat here. Just get your plate, and you'll notice that they're, uh, they've got a bump in them, yeah? So you want it raised to the top, and you've got some little locating dowels on the brass bits that stick up, yeah? Top and bottom, and some holes, like a ratchety system. So what you want to do is line it up so that your screw holes line up, yeah, and then your little indents line up. And then it's up to you which screw holes you use to hold it on. So I'll fix this one now and show you, show you how it looks like when it's done. And there we go, as if by magic, quick camera edit there. Two screws, one each side, yeah, little ratchet things pop through there. So that's not going to move anywhere, that's, that's solid now. Yeah, this is actually a security locking mechanism, so the new stereo clicks into place, a bit like your old one. So that's firmly on now. All you've got to do is reverse it, do the other side, and then your actual cage that came with it, feed all your cabling through it, like, like so. So just push your metal cage in. There you go, you've got your metal metal cage. We've got sunlight today, guys, bright sunlight, so it's pretty hard to show uh, stuff in dark places. But your metal cage is slid straight in with all your wiring hanging out. And then all you do, get yourself a little flat blade screwdriver and you'll notice some little cut out triangle sections on the edge of the cage. You'll probably see them at the bottom there a bit better. Just twist, push them down a little bit and that just secures the cage so that it will not come out. You know, it won't slide out when you hit one of our wonderful potholes that we've got on the roads. There you go, just go all the way around it. Just sort of four or five really is enough. Do some of those. Moving on to the steering wheel controls. So if you've got a steering wheel with buttons on them, like this one, volume and everything on it, you, you can get those working easy enough using this bit of kit uh, that I showed you the part before earlier on. Okay, so these kits are brand dependent, which means they work on certain brands. You've got Alpine, Clarion, JVC, Fusion, Kenwood, other, etc., Pioneer and Sony. You can program them for other brands, hence you've got another one there, yeah? But this particular car, uh, it's having a Kenwood fitted. So, on your box, you've got dip switches, yeah? Ignore the first block, this block here, because this is to set it for which vehicle you're going to use it on. Now, it will come preset for the Vauxhall Astra, and also work on quite a lot of other Vauxhalls, without fiddling around with it, without touching it. So don't disturb them, leave those alone completely. What you're looking at is here, switches one to four, yeah? Now, we're on a Kenwood, which is this one here, and you'll notice dip switch one and two is down, and dip switch three and four is up. So to get that right, we've actually got to switch dipstick one and two down, okay? So if I just balance that carefully, get my little screwdriver. There we go, I'll try and show you on the video here. Uh, they are quite fiddly. 
down, down. There we go. So you want two down, two up. Yeah? Kenwood, two down, two up. So it's got to match it exactly. Look, one and two down, three and four up. That will then set this to work on a Kenwood stereo. Okay, now your next thing, on your loom that comes with this, the stereo, this actually comes with the Kenwood stereo, this part, you'll have a wire on this one saying remote connect, yeah? Some stereos have a jack plug hole in the back of them for the steering wheel controls, some, some don't, Kenwood don't, they have this little blue wire. So on the wiring that comes with the steering control adapter, you've got the option, yeah? You've got a blue wire, which funnily enough connects to the blue wire on the loom there for the Kenwoods, but you've got a jack plug which connects to Pioneer, Sony, that type of thing, okay? So what we've got to do is click all this together. We'll do that now. You quite literally can't get this bit wrong because the plugs are custom sized. You can only get one in the right side sort of thing. So large one in one side, small one with the adapter. There you go, runs around to the blue wire that you're going to use. And the other one comes off here, look. Quad lock adapter, which will plug onto your factory fitted quad lock in the car there. You've got to connect your blue wire up. We'll connect that up right now. Right oh, as if by magic, we've now connected them together. Yeah, uh, there's no real voltage runs through this, so uh, you can use these little bullet connectors. You don't have to go soldering it or anything. Like I say, you know, there's no no serious voltage going through these. On the Kenwood loom, by the way, this is the light blue cable with the yellow stripe. Okay, there's also a dark blue cable which says antenna control on it. Now you'd use that one to switch an amplifier on and off, or in our case. You use it for the cable that comes from the dab aerial because the dab aerial is powered. Or if you've got an electric aerial, you connect your power feed to here. So we'll connect those two together now. Again, bullet connected together there. There's your power wire for the antenna. Uh, these don't really run any power either. They're like 300 millivolts, so you, you you don't need to solder it. You know, you can just put all these little connectors on. It's no big deal. I will probably be looming this up with a bit of electrical tape just to tidy it all up. Uh, as for your quad lock connector, very, very straightforward thing to do. Slide it on, obviously get it the right way around. It will not go on the wrong way, so don't try and force it. Slide it on, and then the bar underneath, click. There you go. Both sides, that's now locked in. Yeah, it's going nowhere. There you go, so that is on. And then you want an aerial adapter, because on this particular car, I've lost my aerial, it's actually disappeared. Where's it gone? There we go. There it is. You got a FACRA connection, so we need a little adapter to go from there to a normal one, like so. I will list all the part numbers in the uh, description below this video, so you don't have to worry about pausing the video to get the part numbers. I will list them all, all down for you. Just clicks on, just shove it, push fit, and a normal aerial connector on the end, yeah. So at this point, you're ready to basically, you know, tape up all your wiring, make it all nice and neat and tidy and everything, and uh, you can look at getting the stereo in the hole. So I'm just going to tie up all my cable in and I'll cut to the scene where uh, the stereo is sort of lining up. Now the hardest thing is actually going to be getting all this in the back of the dashboard. Although it looks like a large hole to get all this cabling in, the vehicle's designed, you know, basically to just have the factory fitted stereo in without any of this bulk behind it. So getting this to sit nicely behind and then getting the stereo in flush is probably a most challenging part of this. You can actually tuck it down the back left hand corner. There's a bit bit of a hole on the back here to put it all so I suggest you sort of push it all back before you do anything to try and get some of it at least out of the way to the big block there we go um so all you're left with is your you might you know they've got a microphone on this particular one it's there you go your microphone in the middle there I'll put the microphone in the middle because if it's a converter you'll have a lot of wind noise if you put it on the top right hand corner at least there it's shielded a bit okay and then you've got your you've got your Kenwood wiring loom there plugged into the adapter that plugged into the quad lock at the back uh, and everything's ready we just need to hide all this out of the way uh, so when you've tucked it all down that back corner it's gone behind the heat panel that i was on about earlier on because there's a big gap behind there you're just going to be left with your power connector for the radio your aerial adapter if you fit in a dab aerial love your dab aerial connector and obviously this particular one microphone if you've got it you should then be able to click all that in and hopefully slide the stereo in nicely Right, quick tip guys, before you shove it all the way back in, yeah, just make sure it's storing your radio stations on your presets. You don't want to click it all in and then find you can pull it back out again to swap your two power wires around to cure that problem. If you do have the problem where it's not storing your radio presets, just pull it out and swap your yellow and red wire around. The wiring loom that came with the radio has got a yellow and red wire and they're on bullet connectors. All you do is unpull 
them apart and switch them around so that yellow goes to red, red goes to yellow. That's it. Only here you have the problem where when you take your key out of the ignition and turn the power off, when you come to put the key back in and put the power back on, the radio has lost its presets. So you only do that if your radio is not storing its radio stations and stuff. Okay. If you've got the wiring adapter that I've got here, you will not have that problem. Okay. So you're free at this point once you've satisfied your power adapter to strip back in and up to the flush point for these locking tabs. There you go. You might have to jiggle it around because the plastic's quite tight each side, but uh, lock it in, put your frame on. Last thing to do, plastic frame that comes with your fitting kit. It sits just inside, there we go, inside the uh, dashboard fascia that came there. You need to wiggle them around a bit to get them to fit snugly. Yeah, that's snugly in, bottom corner. They are tight, guys, they're meant to be. You don't want them popping off, like say, with our great road conditions. There you go, bottom corner in. Click, click, all the way around. Job done. Uh, let's just test the and at this point, we will check everything works. I know you've checked it once already, but uh, you know, never, never, never hurts to check something again, does it? There we go. We've got, I think we've got absolute radio station tune. Give it a minute. And I'm done. there we go. So let's try the. Uh, Stereo controls. That all works. So that is how you fit a DAB double pin radio to a Vauxhall Astra, complete with fitting kit, part numbers and everything else. If you've got any questions at all, please drop them in the comments below. I do try and answer them the same day. But bear in mind, I do these video guides, you know, for free. So, uh... Just bear that in mind. Drop the questions. I'm not bothered. I will try and answer your questions for you on any make, model of car. Doesn't matter what it is, how exotic it is. And uh, we'll see what we can do. Thanks for watching. If there's any help, please click like. Bye.